This video is going to show you some techniques to create complex layered mats and textures within After Effects and I'm going to show you this in the process of creating this very fun and adaptable stretched bubblegum effect. We are going to cover these four steps right here today. Let's jump right in. All right, so to start off with, I've got a composition. Inside my composition, I have a pre-comp with my text layer in it. This means that later on down the line, if I want to change my text, I can do that. Absolutely no problem. It's going to make no other changes. And I've also got a single shape layer here. If I drop into it, you can see I've got 25 shapes on it. And these shapes are all going to make up that stringy texture that we see on chewing gum if I bring up my references here I wanted to create this look and as you can see it's also going to work great for creating this stretched cheese effect or stretched slime effect it's really adaptable so to create that stringy look I just used a CC glass effect to get some of those holes in there and I just used a matte choker to kind of harden the edges up. So the next thing that I wanted to do was create some textures that I was going to layer onto my text. Now obviously there's a few ways you can do textures. You could import an image if you want. I prefer to create them in After Effects and my favorite favorite way is always to use fractal noise. There's a turbulent noise as well. I always end up with fractal. I'm just stuck in my ways. So these were the details that I changed. I changed it to dynamic. Spline I made sure to check the invert box um, and yeah just adjusted the scale and width I upped the influence and scaling a little bit alongside the complexity and I knew that I was going to be changing the color and I knew that I was going to use the colorama effect I made sure to change it to soft clamp I think usually it's on allow HDR and you can see that when I changed it to soft clamp it brought in a lot more of those grays and I did this because I was going to like I said I was going to add the colorama and see on my colorama I actually just did some shades of pink if Colorama is brand new to you, I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, you can just ignore all of the other settings and only change the colors on your output cycle. So long as your fractal noise is black and white, it will do the trick. I will just pop the hex codes on the screen if you're trying to recreate this exactly. The last thing I wanted to do, you can see our cheese over here or just these stringy textures are actually very long and stretched out so to recreate that effect i went and added a warp effect and then on our layer i actually changed the scale to 169 because you'll see here if i change this back the warp effect actually just completely stretches it down so yeah to fix that i just upped the scale of our texture altogether. Okay, so that was the first texture that I made. And the second one, I actually just duplicated it. I changed a few settings in the fractal noise. I adjusted the brightness. I upped the complexity ever so slightly fully brought down the scale and yeah that was it. The next thing that I did was start creating some matte layers to use to texture different areas of my text. I mainly used the calculations effect to do this. If you haven't seen the calculations effect used before it essentially is pulling other layers channel properties from their layer into this layer with the effect on it. For example on my first matte layer, which I have named Gum Composite, I have put two calculations effects on it. So the first one, I'll just switch this on down here, it is pulling from the text source layer. The second layer channels are just pulling from the RGBA. The opacity is 100% and I've changed the blending mode to stencil alpha and I've uh, preserved the transparency. And then I have added a second calculations effect, referenced our shape layers. I've made sure to check effects and masks, made sure the second layer channel is RGBA, 100% blending mode normal. And you can see all that we have really done is recreated these two on a single layer. So by doing it this way it means we can make some changes without having strange like kind of blending lines between our text. I'm also going to be referencing this gum composite in a few of my next matte layers. Here is an example of what this could have looked like if I had just started trying to add colors and such separately. You can see it just doesn't blend as well. 
And I could have achieved this just by making a pre-comp, but I didn't want to do it this way for a few reasons. One reason being that I wanted to reference both the text source and shapes separately in a little while. So I did want one more thing for this layer and it is going to be my base text layer. So I've also added a fill here. Uh, this is the hex code if you are interested. All right, and that is our first mat completed. I really don't want to bore you going step by step through every single number and detail on these layers. I'll run through this mat to the gum composite too, just so you can get an idea of different variations of other effects on there. But otherwise, I'll just like quickly just show it on the screen and move on to the next step because otherwise it's just going to be really long and unnecessary. So the second mat that I have created, you can see is a lot more complex. Uh, so the first calculation is creating an outline of our text. It is referencing our text layer and it is using a blend mode of silhouette alpha. Then I added a Gaussian blur to it to blur out the outlines. And then I added a third calculations and set it to stencil alpha. So we've just got this uh, basic fade coming into the middle. Then I brought in our gum shapes and just lowered the opacity slightly to kind of match this because I want to add in a blur and I just wanted to shove it all down slightly. Uh, basically, I don't didn't want it in the exact location that it was before, so I've shoved it all down slightly. Then I have stenciled it out again to make sure that it's not going outside of those outlines. So now though it's super faded, I wanted to use it as a mat, so I used the threshold to harden it all back up again. And then I've just actually added a simple choker on it which works quite well you can adjust this and it actually adjusts the thickness so uh, maybe you wanted your gum texture to be a little thicker you could change that right there so you get the general idea if you're trying to recreate this then here is the third mat you can see it's not quite as complicated um, I just wanted the texture kind of sitting in these darker areas and not so much the bottom of the text. On the fourth mat that I created, it's been used as a drop shadow rather than referencing it. So I have added in a fill effect down here at the bottom. Sorry, I just want to show all of these numbers for anyone who's wanting to recreate this effect. So I've added a fill effect. This is the hex code if you are interested. Then I'm just going to combine all of my text layers. So I've got my gum composite, my first mat that I created, and the drop shadow adding it a little bit of variation. And then on my first texture, I'm going to change the track mat to gum composite 3. So we've got some of that uh, texture coming in on the faded areas and then I'm going to switch the second texture on and change the gum composite to two. And then I went ahead and pre-comped it and basically just made some little changes which are just personal preference at this point. I added a rough and edges um, which is actually quite cool because if you uh, play around with the border and the scale and the complexity you can start really adjusting the outline. Then I just added a CC plastic onto it uh, just to make it a little bit more shiny. I've seen some gum textures, which I don't think I put on my texture layer, but you know, that hard uh, chewing gum look. That is it for this video. Make sure to check out this one right here to see what else you can do with the fractal noise effect within After Effects. I'll see you in the next one.